Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Zinch as we get into the realm of Zinch within the warp. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And if you have any suggestions, just comment down below. If you do enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. Link in the description if you want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the realm of Zinch. Created from the raw energy of the warp, Zinch's realm is one of constant flux and shifting structures. Created spontaneously from every material imaginable. Known as the Crystal Labyrinth, no mortal few demons can visit the realm of the raven god and survive with their sanity intact. Just as Zinch manifests and appears in many different guises, many of them fluid and shifting, so too the domain of the changer of ways within the realm of chaos constantly adapts to its master's whims, desires, moods, and of course the demands of his thousand and one plots. Humans, Xenos, and demons perceive and interpret this territory in a wide variety of ways. In fact, some scholars and a few of the more coherent first-hand witnesses who have survived contact with Zinch's realm have suggested that neither mortal nor demon, except perhaps the more powerful lords of change, can grasp the true nature of Zinch's shifting realm. Most who visit the domain of the Great Mutator quickly go mad. Those of exceptionally strong mind and strong will can perhaps interpret but one facade of the often crystalline landscape that, like Zinch himself, has an infinite number of faces. Many commentators suggest that the mind can only perceive this world of warp energy created into something resembling solid form through symbols or metaphors, images created by the mind of the iron will in an attempt to make sense of pure chaos and constant change. In fact, many witnesses rely on paradoxical metaphors even to describe the process of perceiving Zinch's realm itself, sculpting with fog describing a dream as it occurs, singing silently, painting with mist and the like. The great ocean of the warp is a sea of madness and insanity, and Zinch's realm is the concentrated essence of such things given form. In spite of the constantly changing nature of the domain of the architect of fate, and the limited capacity of mortals' minds to perceive and comprehend it, certain common views have emerged from the extent descriptions of Zinch's realm. Some observers claim that the enormous crystalline labyrinth dominates the landscape, a luminescent plane shimmering like a polished molten opal. Passages in the maze appear, dissolve, merge, split, and change direction seemingly at random. Those who gaze into the crystalline substances that compose this maze may see more than light reflected and refracted in the fluctuating facets of the shining surfaces. They may catch glimpses of fear, miseries, and hopes made visually manifest, dreams and nightmares, histories real and imagined, potential futures, images of torment, ecstasy and despair, and through it all, an abstract thought made momentarily concrete as pictures in a crystal. One visionary reported seeing various images of his children at different points in their lives, all of them moments of despair, sorrow, and desperation. Another recounted her experience in Zincha's realm, as one of ecstasy, as she witnessed reflected representations of what she took as her possible futures, each more joyful and successful than the last. Yet another claimed to observe nightmare imagery in the mirrored surface of the labyrinth, demons rending flesh from friends and loved ones, the destruction of his home by dark sorcerers wielding warp fire, and worst of all, the transformation of his own body into a tentacled, withering mass. When this last traveler was finally able to tear his gaze away from the hellish visions, he discovered that days had passed, and that his body had indeed changed into the hideous chaos spawn he had seen in his visions. Imperial records show that all three of these individuals met their tragic end. Suicide, insanity, and execution at the hands of the Inquisition, respectively. In one sense, these survivors of Zincha's realm were fortunate, and it is rumored that most who travel through the maze of the Raven God wander it eternally as miserable, insane shells of their former selves, forever tormented by ghastly visions, regrets over their mistakes and missed opportunities, and the hope for a tomorrow that will never be realized. While the passage of time in the warp fluctuates and does not correspond to its regular linear flow in the normal four-dimensional space-time of real space, 
the inconsistency of time's progression is even more pronounced in Zinch's realm. In what seems like a few minutes spent gazing into the depths of the crystals of Zinch's labyrinth, days or even standard years can pass. Two individuals might enter Zinch's realm in the same instance in time. One might exit moments later and report that years have passed, whereas others could spend centuries of real time in Zinch's realm, but swear that he had been gone only for a few minutes. A single footstep may seem to take hours to complete, what seems like a few seconds spent admiring a beautiful refraction of light on the crystalline structure of the maze can take days. Many visitors, momentarily transfixed by some curiosity in Zinch's realm, have died of dehydration or starvation. Others can spend years wandering the insane corridors of Zinch's maze without drinking, eating, or resting, their metabolism apparently slowed by chaotic influence. Legends tell of an entity known as the Guardian of the Maze, that inhabits the Crystalline Labyrinth. Though his name implies that he serves as the protector of Zinch's realm, he is set to function more as an observer and a gatekeeper. Rumors tell of a path through Zinch's realm that, in theory, any mortal or demon may follow to discover infinite knowledge. To follow this path, the Inquisitive Pilgrim must travel through nine gates. These portals, three times the height of a man, appear as golden arches wreathed in blue and pink warp flame of Zinch. Such is the power of the Guardian of the Maze, or perhaps it is the bizarre temporal nature of Zinch's twisted realm itself, that the Guardian manifests as a giant, disembodied mouth hovering over all nine gates simultaneously. At each gate, the mouth ponderously speaks, asking those seekers of knowledge one of the 999 riddles of Xanathrox. Those who answer the riddles correctly may pass through the gates and continue along the path of ultimate enlightenment. Those who fail to answer correctly are doomed to wander the labyrinth for all eternity, wreaked with insanity and regret over the infinite knowledge that might have been theirs. Zinch's Sanctum Sanctorum, known as the Impossible Fortress, is said to lie at the center of the crystalline maze. If indeed geographical descriptions such as center apply with any accuracy to this inconstant realm. While this etheric edifice is in constant flux, many have described it as a crystalline castle composed of the same sort of material as the labyrinth that surrounds it. Imbalanced spires spontaneously emerge from the ever-shifting foundations of this impossible fortress, as do towers of blue and pink warp flame searing warp fire. Gates, doors, and portals slowly open as if yawning, only to slam shut like mouths of terrible beasts and then disappear. Mortals shackled by psychological manacles forged by a lifetime of habit in the material realm cannot fathom the perverse design of Zinch's home. As the name of this fastness implies, even the most visionary and heretical designers of the material realm cannot draft plans for this maddening architecture the impossible fortress deep inside Zinch's home. According to some profane accounts, lies Zinch's fabled hidden library. This infinite collection of tomes, scrolls, and parchments of every kind contains every scrap of knowledge and thought ever recorded in creation. Stories written and unwritten, histories true and alternate, and accounts of future potentials, actual and imagined. Many of the volumes are so weighty with knowledge that they gain a sentience of a kind and spend centuries chattering to passerbys, arguing with one another, rewriting themselves, and then reorganizing their placements accordingly. Magical chains of warp fire help to protect the books and bind them in place. Horrors serve as grotesque librarians and work tirelessly to reshelve the works, catalog the collections, and maintain what passes for order in the impossible fortress. As with so many things associated with a changer of ways, few things are always as they seem. Although the crystal maze, the impossible fortress, and the hidden library often appear as described, by no means are these descriptions consistent with every narrative provided by those unfortunate souls who have visited Zinch's domain. One of these unfortunate souls is Bach Zamael, dubbed the lunatic Scrivener of Havelock Prime by the Hive City's prince who acts as his patron claims to have traveled and returned from Zinch's realm in the early 41st millennium. Samayo attests that he saw nothing but a bleak hill on which a single, leafless tree stood. Another unfortunate soul, Dayless Dial, 
the heretic illuminator of Falentan, who was later executed for heresy, described Zinch's realm as a barren, desert landscape populated by deformed, headless humanoids that continuously split and reform into new bodies. Other witnesses have described a realm of pulsating and constantly morphing protoplasm, towers of fungus and mold, continents of sentient vegetation and vines with unfinite length, and vast landscapes of nothing but barren stone and ash. It is likely that Zinch's realm is all of these things and more. Others have suggested that observers interpret Zinch's realm subjectively, filtering their perception of structured warp energy through their own expectations and experiences. It may be most probable that Zinch himself determines how each mortal or demonic individual perceives his realm to suit the needs, whims, and conspiracies of the Master of Lies. And those were 40 facts on the realm of Zinch. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can continue to post videos. If you guys want to support us, link in the description. It's a dollar a month, uh, and that one dollar a month goes a long way. So thank you guys ahead of time if you support. Zinch and the lore of the realm of Zinch is probably one of my favorites because it just the descriptions of, of what reality or how uh, reality can be uh, twisted and, and, and changed uh, is just a lot of fun to, to, to think about, uh, almost like Cthulhu in nature or ethereal in nature. Uh, it's, it's really inspirational for just a variety of things from terrain building to D&D &D campaign sessions. Uh, it's just a really fun uh, a set of lore. Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k, any other chaos realms that you guys would like us to talk about, please comment down below. We're going to get to everything at some point, um, but if you have a specific um, location that you guys want us to talk about within the realm, comment down below. Uh, thanks for everything, guys. The uh, 150,000 uh, subscriber giveaway coming very, very soon, uh, so stay tuned for that. But with that said, this was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>